Hey guys, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. I am Alan, and today we're going to be dealing with a couple of interesting things in Lightroom tutorial number eight. Okay, so today we're going to deal with two different areas of the Lightroom Develop panel that cause quite a bit of confusion for people who are new to this. The first section we're going to be looking at is the lens correction section, which is basically where we have a little bit of control over fixing problems that the lens causes. Then in the second half, we'll be looking at the geometry of our photographs, and that's largely going to be to fix things that we do wrong with the camera. So in the first part, lens correction, we're going to be dealing with two of the more common problems that uh, our lenses cause. Just as a refresher, this is a lens. You may have seen one before. It goes on the front of your camera. The purpose of this thing is to bend the light in such a way that whatever you're photographing can be represented on a small square screen in the camera which means that the light rays have to be bent in certain ways in order to do that. Now, when you bend light rays, a couple of things can happen, and it depends on the lens and how far away you are from your subject, and a, a whole bunch of different factors go into this. But the first thing that can happen is, in the process of bending the light rays, you can end up with straight lines that appear to be bent in your photograph. That's called distortion. Uh, and it's different from what we're going to be talking about in the, uh, in the uh, transform panel, the geometry panel, because those lines aren't bent, they're straight. So fixing straight lines we'll deal with in a little bit. For now, we're just talking about fixing bulging or um, bent lines caused by the lens. The other thing that happens when light passes through a lens and it becomes bent is that light of different wavelengths bends differently as it goes through a glass lens element. And what that does, if you've ever, if you ever looked at um, a little prism in the sun, how it splits white light into a rainbow basically, Lenses do that too to a limited extent, and it causes sometimes fringing, either at the red end of the spectrum or at the purple end of the spectrum. And uh, there are a couple of different types of this bending, but the end result is something that we call chromatic aberration. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, but anyway, part one, let's fix the things that our lenses are doing. To our pictures. So let's jump into Lightroom here and we'll begin with um, this picture as an example of uh, what happens when we use a, uh, a fairly wide angle lens. Wide angle lenses tend to be worse for both of these things and one other thing I'd mention is that the, the problems caused by bending the light rays are somewhat uh, improved by having a better lens. The really expensive lenses include additional elements in the design of the lens specifically for removing chromatic aberration or minimizing distortion. To take some of the pictures today, I used a really cheap old lens um, that's really pretty terrible in order to show you just how bad the uh, distortion and chromatic aberration can be. But in this first image, you can immediately see that there is a bending of the uprights of this building on the left. And they appear to, uh, the, the lines appear to be bending towards the outside, bulging toward the outside. This is a classic example of barrel distortion where, the central part of the image appears to be bulging out at you. And the way we correct this is to go into the lens correction panel in the develop module 
and it's really very simple. All you have to do is click on Enable Profile Corrections. When you click on that, you're telling Lightroom to look up uh, in its database the lens that you used. It knows which lens you used from the EXIF data with the photograph. And then apply the changes that this lens um, uh, requires to straighten the lines out. In other words, within a particular uh, make and model of lens, they tend to have very similar distortion patterns. So what Lightroom has done is created a profile for each lens, and there are thousands of lenses in here. Um, so if, you, if your lens doesn't show up, you can manually pick it from a list. But the point is Lightroom kind of knows what to expect when it knows what lens you've got and it tries to correct uh, the anticipated problems. Hasn't done a perfect job here, mind you. It's still showing quite a bit of uh, distortion. So when that happens, there are a couple of things that we can do. Uh, first of all, check that it is in fact the lens you have on there, and there is a drop down menu that, that will list the lenses by maker, and they're almost all in there. They're adding them all the time and this is the correct lens and it still hasn't done a great job so what we can do is we can increase or decrease the amount of distortion correction with this top slider the amount slider now you can see when the when the overlay is is put onto the image you can see the extent of that bulging and we can use these guidelines to correct that now as you slide to the right it is going to push the center of the photograph back in essence uh, it, by adding a little bit of pincushion distortion to make up for the, for the um, barrel distortion. And that really hasn't done uh, a very good job, has it? If we go the other way, we should make the problem worse. And yes, we do. That adds further barrel distortion. So if you can't fix it with the amount slider, just go into the manual. And at the, the very top of the manual window, there is an amount slider for distortion. And generally speaking, I would tick the constrain crop so that you don't end up with transparent areas in your photograph. And then it's just a matter of manually adding pincushion distortion in this case. And as I do so, there we, well, definitely better. So it doesn't take a whole lot. This is a very sensitive slider, but if, you, if you're if you using a, a, a wide angle lens and you have bad distortion, probably the best way to get it all taken care of is to come into manual and use that distortion slider. Okay, that's all there is to it. Most of the time, 99% of the time, just clicking Enable profile co uh, corrections will do it. Second set of problems, chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is uh, an interesting problem. There are two types, like we discussed, there's the, the, the more common type that we see is the lateral distortion. And that is when we see uh, fringing in reds, and cyans or blues and yellows. When we see colors of in, in those ranges, what we're looking at is lateral chromatic aberration and that is extremely easy to fix. One button will do it. When you see lateral um, aberration, just click the remove chromatic aberration box and that will take care of it. I know that this image has uh, some horrible aberration in it. Let me wait for the photograph to load there. That's about as good an example as you'll ever see. Now, you're looking at that and thinking, well, that's neither cyan, red, or blue, yellow. That's green and purple. Green and purple usually implies that you're dealing with a different kind of chromatic aberration called axial aberration, which is harder to fix. 
Interestingly, I think we have both kinds of aberration here because when I click on the remove chromatic aberration button, a lot of it disappears. So I think that we actually had both lateral and axial. Now see, we still have both green and purple fringing in this picture. So to fix axial chromatic aberration, uh, click the manual button on the lens correction window and drop down to the defringe area. There are two sliders for amount, one for the purple amount, one for the green amount. Sliding the slider to the right removes more of that color. The uh, hue sliders, there are two of these as well. They basically allow you to define purple. In other words, if, you're, if the purple fringing in your photograph is more towards the blue end of purple, then you would want to slide these two sliders down towards the left and create your, your defringe zone in more of the kind of fringe color that you're seeing. And similarly to the right, if it's a more magenta kind of, um, uh, kind of fringing. Usually you're perfectly safe to leave it right about in the middle, somewhere in that 24 to 60 range. Same with the green hue. Uh, the green tends to operate in a slightly uh, narrower band. Um, you don't need to have these two spread out because you don't want to remove colors that you, you uh, uh, don't want to. That didn't make any sense at all circular reasoning. You don't want to move colors that are part of your photograph. You only want to move the abnormal colors. So in this case, you can either fix that purple fringing by sliding the, the slider towards the right. That's not doing very much. And same with the green. Now that did a good, much better job there. Or we'll put them back where they were. You can just take the eyedropper and when you carry the eyedropper over to your photograph, if you place it over the fringing, if it recognizes these as part of your selected color, the dropper will light up either green or purple. I'm talking about the actual um, liquid in the, the dropper. All you have to do is click on the colors, the green and the purple, wherever you see them, until all of the um, chromatic aberration is removed. What it's doing each time I click, it's removing the hues that, uh, of that color. I have one other uh, photograph to, uh, with a more subtle example. Um, you're gonna see chromatic aberration in the parts where a light part of the image abuts on a dark part of the image, generally speaking. And I was looking through some pictures and I found a good example of, or maybe not a great example, but a, a little bit of fringing here. Let's, uh, let's see if we can remove that. It looks green to me, suggesting I might not be able to, to get rid of that. And when I click on the remove chromatic aberration, it leaves some green fringing behind. So in this case, uh, I'd go into manual and I would use the green slider and there you go. That's all it, that's all it took to, to get rid of that axial aberration. I think there was one more I had that I wanted to show you. This, this was with um, a uh, standard lens but I did notice that um, it had a good example of lateral fringing. This is blue chromatic aberration. It's not always easy to see against the blue sky, but if you zoom in enough, you'll, you'll see there's a definite blue fringe here. To fix that, go into the, uh, to the profile part of lens correction and just click on remove chromatic aberration. Because it's blue, it's one of the types of lateral aberration and it removed it completely. And that's all you have to do. So for, for blue, yellow, red, um, cyan, lateral will do it. Just click on the 
remove chromatic aberration for anything else in the purple or green range, go into manual and fix it manually. Before we go down to the transform panel, there is one other thing I want to show you in the lens correction panel, and that is uh, at the bottom, you'll notice a vignetting slider. This is actually to correct unwanted vignettes. This is when your lens causes a darkening at the edges of the photograph. You can use this slider to compensate for that and brighten up the edges of the, of the picture. Next week, we're going to be talking about creating a, an artistic vignette. Um, if you like that kind of thing. That's down in the effects panel. We aren't there yet. So when you see this vignetting slider, it's it's basically to correct what the lens has done as opposed to adding, adding a vignette uh, for creative purposes. So let's go down to the, pick another picture and go down to the transform panel. I would stress right off the bat that a lot of what goes on in the transform panel is up to you. It's when you take a photograph, you know what you want the photograph to look like, but sometimes because of the limitations of our position relative to the shot and the fact that we're not 90 feet tall, sometimes we end up having to take photographs with our camera pointed up or pointed down or pointed to the sides. And every time we do that, we are gonna catch perspective that may not look right in our photograph. None of us regular photographers can afford tilt shift lenses and stuff like that that will allow you uh, to more accurately capture the, the photograph. What you have to remember is if you want a, a, a photograph that is absolutely geometrically perfect, your camera's sensor has to be absolutely parallel to the, to the face of the object. Otherwise, you are going to introduce these, these perspective shifts. And this panel is for tweaking that to get it the way that you want it. And you're not looking for perfect geometry every time. I mean, tall buildings do taper when you look at them. You can use these tools to make it dead straight the whole way up and it looks completely abnormal. So this is some, the, the changes that you make in the transform panel need to be uh, consistent with what you're trying to show from the, um, with the photograph. I was walking around in town the other day and I, I saw, I saw this building uh, that had these shiny windows and uh, a beautiful cloud in one of the windows. And I thought that was nice. And I just snapped a picture of it and walked on. Now, in this case, it, you know, it, it, it's not necessarily problematic that the window is tilted a little bit, but because what I'm really focusing on here is uh, the solitary window with the cloud in it, I think it would be a little more satisfying if the, uh, if the geometry of the window was a little bit more straightened, as if you were either looking straight at it or at least looking straight up at it. So let me walk you through the various tools in the transform panel. Uh, when off is pressed, you, the Lightroom does not attempt to correct any of the, the geometry. When you press auto, it will do what it considers uh, the best job of uh, establishing uprights and um, uh, levels that fix the, the anatomy of the picture. Sometimes it nails it, like in a picture like uh, this. Let me see. Um, that's pretty close. I shot this on a tripod, but when I click the auto button, but it didn't make a whole lot of difference, I guess, because everything was lined up. Uh, but anyway, I've got some other pictures I'll show you uh, in a second, but we'll go back to this window. Auto is a good place to start. Click on it, see what it looks like. In this case, I don't like the converging lines towards the top. I kind of want to give the, the viewer of the photograph the feel that they're looking at the window straight on. So I want to remove some of this uh, upward perspective. 
Now, there are several ways I could do that. One is to, to hit guided and I have a feel, I have a feeling, yes, I, I already uh, put lines on this. Let's reset that. Okay, if you want to use the guided tool, click on guided or click on the tool itself. Either way, it turns your cursor into a cross and you can place your cursor on an edge. Ideally, you want these edges to be far apart and drag, click and drag, place it on, use the magnifying window there. It's tricky on a trackpad. That's one line, just release when you've got the, the line straight. Then cl click another um, upright, drag, and put it on the edge. And then Lightroom will correct those lines to parallel. Now, that is fine and that now looks fairly upright, but you can see this white triangle at the bottom, that's transparent in the photograph the way we have it. So we would want to tell Lightroom to crop it as large as possible to get rid of that triangle. So when we, uh, when we do that, it crops in just a little bit. Now we have at least the upright, upright lines vertical, but now it's looking as if I'm shooting from the side because of the fact that the horizontal lines are converging to the left of the photograph. So if I wanted to go even further, I could add a couple of horizontal lines, one across the top. That's really all it took, but I'm gonna add the, a second line across the, the bottom for even more accuracy. Well, heck, there we go. That was just below the edge there. Now with all four lines, we now have the perspective I was looking for, which is dead on uh, to the window. So that's what guided can do. If you want to correct uprights, use upright lines. If you want to correct horizontal lines, only use the horizontal lines. If you want something perfectly square, use all four. All right, uh, let's turn that off. Level vertical and full are three combination settings. Level is going to simply remove the convergence of the, of, of the horizontal lines to give the illusion that, that you're level with the photograph. Vertical will use both the horizontal and the vertical lines, and the full will use the level and the vertical and perspective to correct the, the geometry to absolutely perfect and square, which for this purpose is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. But let's take another example. Here's a, here's a building and let's see what full does to this. Okay. It's a matter of what you're trying to fix. If I, t if I tell Lightroom to use full on this building, it's stretching it out, flattening out, making everything um, uh, vertical, parallel, making everything horizontal, parallel. And what we end up with is an absolutely unusable photograph. So be careful what you ask Lightroom to do. Let's go back to the window again. And let me show you what the manual transform sliders do. The vertical slider will, will add perspective to your uprights, either by having them converge towards the top or converge towards the bottom. And it gives the sensation of, of looking at a, ball, a, a building that's falling away from you or falling towards you. And I keep saying buildings because uh, taking images of structures that have strong vertical and horizontal lines, that's where this comes in. A tree is gonna look pretty much like a tree regardless of any geometry weirdness that's going on, but a building doesn't look like a proper building if it's, if its lines are wonky, if you see what I mean. Not a very scientific explanation. So the vertical transform button, if you slide it to the right, it causes the lines to converge to the top. If you slide it to the left, they converge to the bottom. And 
almost all the time you'll be using this to correct a photograph that looks like it's too pointy, too falling off in the distance. It brings the perspective back a little bit. With horizontal, it's exactly the same as vertical, except it's to one side or the other. So it is basically artificially moving your sensor like this after the fact to correct any sideways or horizontal perspective problems that you have. Rotate rotates the photograph around the axis, the axial axis right down the middle of the camera. This is the quickest, easiest way to fix horizons, by the way, uh, just by correcting for the fact that your camera was probably at a slight angle. Aspect is interesting. Uh, after you've made changes, sometimes, sometimes your building looks a little bit too squashed down or a little bit too stretched up, and you can use aspect uh, to re-establish a natural looking uh, vertical horizontal aspect ratio. As you slide it to the right, you squish the photograph in. As you slide it to the left, you squish the photograph down. So again, very much a matter of taste. Scale, once you have, once you've made your geometric changes, sometimes it's helpful to, to zoom back out a little bit. That's really all the scale does. It allows you to recompose the photograph to a certain extent after you've made the changes. The X and Y offset are the same. They just allow you to to move the, the image slightly to, to fix any problems with the composition that your transform changes caused. And that, my friends, is it. A nice compact video this week, but this stuff's useful. It's very, very handy to have in your armamentarium. So next week, uh, episode nine, I'm not sure what we're talking about, but I'm sure it will be riveting and uh, fascinating. So until then, if, uh, if by the way you enjoyed this or found anything useful in it, please leave me a thumbs up or um, uh, subscribe to the channel, that would help. Otherwise, I'll see you in a few days. Until then, take care, have a nice weekend in my case, and I will see you again in a few days. Take care, stay out of trouble. Goodbye.